say one final goodbye uh, and also just to, to celebrate the life uh, of Pat. And so uh, even though this is a, a very difficult day for most of you, uh, we do know that Psalm 34 says, verse 17, When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of their trouble. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saved those who are crushed in spirit. And we believe that uh, He's here for those whose hearts are broken today. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather here this afternoon to remember the precious life of Pat. We also gather to say goodbye one last time, but also to celebrate the life that she enjoyed here on earth. To thank you for every precious moment and memory that we got to have with you. Her life has touched so many in so many different ways. We ask for your peace, your presence to be with us during this time. We ask this in the precious name of your Son. Amen. Pat was a daughter, she was a mom, she was a wife, she was a grandmother, and, uh, and that's what's represented here. She was a friend. Um, so we have family here, we have friends here, we have support here, um, and that just shows that she, uh, she had a different role in every one of our lives that's here this morning. But uh, we want to start this morning with a hymn. Uh, the words will be in your hymnal. Uh, it's a well known hymn, it's Amazing Grace. Sing that uh, together. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to put your mask and sing, you can do that. If you want to sit and sing, whatever you're comfortable with. But let's uh, let's do Amazing Grace together. Let's... You want to stand and do Amazing Grace? Huh? Huh? You want to stand and sing Amazing Grace? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll sing
10, 7 says, The memory of the righteous is a blessing. And uh, that's the most uh, enjoyable part of a service like this, is that we get to share some memories. And uh, get to share some fun memories, and some great memories that we have. And so there's, uh, there's three people that are going to be sharing this morning. And uh, we have one from uh, Debbie, uh, Deborah. Deborah. <laughs> and uh, she, uh, she couldn't be here, she's in the UK. Uh, but she sent this to and asked if I would read it with you uh, for, for you guys this morning. And so this is from Pat's daughter, uh, who says that she's so sad that she could be with you guys. We'd like to share her thoughts. She says, Mom was kind-hearted, loving and a wonderful person. She took great care of her family. She taught her children values in life which have served them well. She enjoyed cooking, sewing and gardening. Although the gardening was probably more hard work than enjoyment. Her favorite place was the Kruger Park. She had a passion for wildlife while she passed this on to her children. I have fond memories of the elephant and rhino charging the car and Pat shouting, Calvin, reverse, reverse! <laughs> we had a lucky escape on both accounts. Pat will be missed by all but will live in our hearts and in our memories. From her daughter. Fun memories. And then we have one from, uh, from my other daughter, Shelly. Um, Shelly wants to write this. She shares this. Mom, thank you for being the most precious mom in the world. For being so brave, strong, courageous. You didn't always have it easy, but you were so very bold and strong. And were one beautiful, loving mom. You were my rock, my shoulder to lean on for leading me to be this woman I am today. I will love you forever and ever. Katie Jade, your princess, will miss you so dearly. Dad will be strong and get through this. I will be there for him. I love you, mom. From Shady. And then Katie wants to share something this morning. Sing a second hymn before we get into some scriptures. And 
was a favorite of the family, uh, all things bright and beautiful. So the words are also in the book that will be on the screen as well, so you want to follow. All things bright. taken the sting of death, he's taken the fear of death out 
because we know what happens after we die. We get to spend an eternity with Him. Revelation 1.17 says, Do not be afraid, for I am the first and the last. I am He who lives. I was dead, but behold, I am alive forevermore. Death couldn't hold Jesus, and He possesses the same promise, that when we die, we get to spend an eternity with Him. The second time we fear death is when we think that death is the end. But this passage tells us that it's not the case. It's just the beginning. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1 says, We know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, that we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, but one that is eternal in the heavens. Pat's life is not over. In fact, it's just begun. It's just begun. She has shared the temporary and exchanged it for an eternal. She's got rid of the tarnished. I like that Dulux image. Like, Granny, why is your house full of wrinkles? Well, Pat got to get rid of her wrinkled house. And she got to swap it for a new house. Uh, one that is perfect. Yes, our earthly bodies die, but our heavenly bodies endure for eternity. And so the first promise we have is that we don't have to fear death because it's not the end. It's just the beginning. The second promise that we have is that Jesus prepares a place for us. And I like what John says. John says that uh, he's prepared a mansion. I, I love that. That's, that's beautiful because it's not, a, it's not a little shack. It's not a little dwelling. It's, it's a mansion. She's in a mansion. Jesus says that he's going to prepare a mansion. For us. And I like the way Revelation puts it. Revelation 21 4 says, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There will be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. This mansion in heaven is in a place where there's no more sorrow, no more crying, no more cues, no more waiting for pension payouts, no more trips to the doctor. No more trips to the pharmacy. No more disappointment. No more hurt. No more frustrations. They've all been replaced with unspeakable joy. The pains of life are not permitted there. The failures of life are not there anymore. Can you imagine a place with no more pain? No handicapped handi 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 parking spaces. Heaven has no hospitals, nursing homes, rehabilitation centers. The days of aches and pains for Pat are over. She's in her mansion. The third beautiful promise that we have in this passage not only is that we don't fear death and that we have a mansion waiting for us, but the third promise is that He, Jesus, personally receives us. John says, And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come and receive you to myself that where I am, you may be also. I want you to imagine the moment that the first thing that Pat saw when she opened her eyes in heaven was Jesus. He doesn't send an angel to fetch you. He doesn't send a representative. He personally comes and fetches you. The first image she saw was the Lord Jesus Christ standing with His arms wide open to receive her into her great mansion that He has prepared for her as he has prepared for us. Pat is experiencing a love right now that we cannot express in words. A love that forgives every failure she had in life. A love that mended every hurt that only she knew. A love that understood every feeling she had. An unconditional love that completely satisfies the longing of your soul. There's a beautiful passage in 1 Corinthians 13 that describes this love. It's a Love that is patient and kind, and forgiving, and just a beautiful fullness of God's love. And that's what she gets to experience right now. The fourth beautiful promise in this is that it's available for us. Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, you don't, you say you don't know the way to heaven, but you do know. And then Jesus gives it. I am the way, the truth. And the life. These beautiful promises of not fearing death and having a mansion and having Jesus welcome for us 
It's available to us. We know the way. It's through Jesus Christ. Pat understood this. She understood that without a relationship with Jesus, there is no good. And there is no future. There is no hope. She understood that Christ came to take away her sins, not only hers, but ours too. She believed in the great promise given in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, and whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Pat knew that you have to have a relationship with Jesus. And if there's, if there's one last wish that Pat could have had, is that at a time like this we would make sure that we are right with Jesus. Because that's the only way we're going to see her again. Is if we have that relationship with Jesus ourselves. And then we get these promises. Promise that when we die, He's the one that greets us. Promise that He's the one that's preparing a mansion for us. And the promise that when we have a relationship with Him, we don't fear death. Because we know it's not the end. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for this wonderful, wonderful reminder in John here, That You have gone to prepare a place for us. A mansion. And that where You are, there You want us to be too. Father, we know that there's only one way, and that's through you. Because you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. And when we believe on you, and call upon you, we get to experience that love and that life. Thank you for the family here this morning. Lord, you know their hearts are broken, but we know that this is not the end, that one day we will see Pat again. We will rejoice with her on the streets that are broken. Father, we also want to pray that if there's anyone this morning that's here that Maybe just wondered. It's maybe not where they should be. It knows their life is not right with you. May they take the opportunity this morning to make right with you. Father, that's the greatest gift that Pat can give. It's an opportunity for us to make right with you. To know that we don't need to fear death. Because we've asked you for forgiveness. We're going to play one more song this morning and maybe just do this as a prayer. You're welcome to sing with me. Maybe just use this as a time to just ask God to come and make your life right. We're going to do a power of your love as a tribute to Pat and we'll just do a few nights more. It's just where we are just take this time to just enjoy this song this morning. Lord, we come to you. Power of your love.
those whose hearts are hurting, those whose hearts are broken, Lord, you would be their comforter. Pray for the family, that you would be with them in these next few days, these next few weeks. Father, that you would just wrap your love around them, camp around them, lift them up, we pray. Father, for Pat, we thank you that we can just commit it to you. Father, we thank you that she is safe in your arms. Lord, we pray for those left behind, for your comfort in your love. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Again, from the family side, just thank you so much um, for everyone who's been sending messages, for everyone that's been encouraging the family. Um, from Calvin, just thank you so much. Um, please join us for some tea and some coffee and take some time to just share with the family and just give them an uh, unofficial from the pulpit, give them a hug. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, let's, uh, let's do that. Please, let's feel free to join us for some tea and coffee. Uh, it's a neat set of Amen. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.